In this video, we're going to be looking at motion in two directions. So while all the problems we've done before only had things moving either up and down or just left and right, we're going to have both of those taking place at the same time in a single problem. Here's a sample problem to help you see what I'm talking about. It says you have a plane flying at 100 meters per second at a 20 degree angle north of east. And we want to know how far it flies in the north and east directions after 15 seconds go by. So in physics, a great way to represent that situation is with a vector instead of with a sentence. So in this case, I've just drawn a velocity vector showing not only how fast the plane is going, but also what direction. Now this is pretty much going to be a universal in physics. And that is when you're given a problem that has an angle going on with it, you're going to want to simply break it up into two pieces. You're going to want to find out what how much of the vector is in the x direction, how much of it is going right, and how much of it is going up. That way we don't have to worry about that pesky angle anymore. Now if you're worried about calculating what vx and vy is, I wouldn't worry about it a whole lot because there's a nice trick you can use. If you know your trig really well, then you can just solve for the other sides of this triangle. But if your trig is a little rusty, here's all you have to do. You know that you're going to end up using sine and cosine in this problem. So just run it with both. Do 100 times sine of 20 and 100 times cosine of 20. And without even having to waste any brain cells, you should be able to figure out which one is which. Think about it. You have a 34.2 and a 94. Look at this triangle. Which one is going to be the 94 and which one's going to be the 34.2? Well, of course, it's going to work out this way. You didn't even really need to be that great at math to know it. You could just look at the triangle and it's obvious. And in fact, most of the time, it's going to be that way. So I would just run sine and cosine and not waste any more brain cells on breaking this vector apart. So now that we have this information, it's time to actually solve the problem. And technically, this is two problems in one. It wants to know how far it flies north and how far it flies east. So we're going to treat it that way. And the way that I do that is I make a YTX chart or an XTY. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. The reason that I make the chart this way is because T is linked to both of these. The plane spends just as much time flying east as it does to the north. So this piece of information ends up getting shared in both the problem for the y direction and the problem for the x direction. Anyway, the calculations end up being pretty simple. In the y direction, if it went 34.2 meters every second and it did that for 15 seconds, then it traveled 513 meters north. And if we want to know how far east it went, then it's just going to be 94 meters per second times 15 seconds and you get 1410. Now it might have felt like the last problem was pretty simple and that I used too many steps, but the reason I did that was to demonstrate a really solid method for these problems because things are going to get a little bit more complicated. So take this as an example. In this case, in the y direction, you got launched at 29.4 meters per second and your velocity in the x direction was 8 meters per second. Now if we look at just the object's motion in the y direction, an interesting thing happens. So here in purple I have the velocity vectors drawn, and you might notice that they're changing. At the beginning it's going really fast in the upward direction, but every second it's getting slower and slower and slower, until it's at the peak where of course the velocity is zero, and then it starts getting faster and faster and faster in the downward direction. A really quick way to sum this up would be to say that the acceleration in the y direction is just minus 9.8 meters per second. But what about the x direction? Well, I have those velocity vectors listed in green, and in this case, check it out, they stay the same throughout the entire flight. This makes sense because gravity pulls down on things. It doesn't really care if you're moving left or right, it's going to let you just keep doing that. So gravity is going to mess with things in the vertical direction, it's going to get slower while it's going up and faster while it's going down. But in the horizontal direction, in the x direction, your velocity is stuck at 8 meters per second the entire time. That's why it's so important that we break the problems down into x and y, is because in a problem like this, the motion is very different in the y direction compared to the x direction. Stay tuned for the next one, and I'll show you an example of this in action.